Hello there guys, uh, welcome to this video. Uh, this is a simple video that I wanted to create uh, uh, to introduce you to how exactly computer stores channels. Now, when I wanted to do the Nuke video, I wanted to record everything in the software, but then I decided that uh, images and channels, at least it's better to have a brief understanding of what exactly they are before I jump into Nuke completely and confuse you. So, for any one of you who is actually interested in doing some advanced stuff with Nuke, then this is a video you had to concentrate on. So, to begin with, uh, the main things that I want to cover here will be what exactly channels mean, how channels are stored in an image, what are the main kinds of channels which you want to store within an image, and then we'll talk about what is called channel sets, and then pretty much uh, I'll go into uh, Nuke in the next video and see how exactly all of this is used. So, to begin with, I just uh, have this image over here. So, on the side here, I have the Eosakura logo, and what I want to do is I'll just um, I'll pick this one section over here and I'll just uh, zoom into it right so if I zoom it in you can immediately start seeing these pixels so you can see these square uh, things which are pretty much everywhere over here so these are what are called pixels let me just highlight it in black so it's easier to see. So all these edges are formed of pixels. Basically they are everywhere in the image, only wherever there is a transition it's easier to see. So now, uh, every single pixel is made of a single color. And how exactly does a computer store color information? It stores it using the subcolors or the primary colors. It tells how much amount of each color goes into it. Now, let's see what exactly I mean by that. I'll just uh, clear out my canvas here and start with it. So, uh, if I want to create any color at all, uh, basically any color that my eyes could see, I would be using the red, the green, and the blue colors, and by mixing them together, I can pretty much create any color I want, which I can display on a monitor now. So, if I just wanted red, I'll basically you know, use a red channel or I'll just use the red color. If I wanted yellow, I'd mix the red and green together. If I wanted orange, I'd take the red and a very little amount of green. So it just goes along from there. You can just uh, search up for what exactly primary additive colors are and RGB color spectrum or uh, something on those lines to know more about it. So I'm not going to go into more detail there. So here we have these three different colors and we have a single pixel and we want this pixel to have some particular color so what we are going to do is we are going to feed in the pixel the color values from all three of this red green and blue so while we are doing this we have to give it in a proper order we have to tell the computer okay what whenever i'm giving you this particular information it's always red when i'm giving you this it's green when i'm giving you this it's blue so for that when we give the set of information or the color to the computer it's given in a proper order so the order follows like this first section of the information is always red then we have the green and then we have the blue so whatever first uh, two color information comes in or first two bits come in for that color goes in here so let's say I tell uh, I'm not using exactly the computer terminology here we'll be using something like the hex code if it was if you're familiar good you can see the similar pattern there but I'm just talking about percentage so let's say 0% red so I have 0% red here and I have something else which tells I want 50% green and something else which tells I want a hundred percent blue it basically gives you the same cyan type of color which I have in the logo here so by giving in this information the computer feeds it in produces the particular blue color and then displays it on this pixel so this is how the computer is creating this information so now the computer the image is not generated by the computer by just using one set of information it's actually having a loads of pixels right if this is an image it's filled with pixels right each one of this is a single pixel and each one has this set of information fed into it so all these pixels have some 
position or some characters which represent red and some which represent green and some which represent blue. Now this is where the concept of channels comes in. So, so channels. Uh, whenever I ask my students or anyone what exactly this channels stand for, I usually get the response, okay, channels, that's easy, that's R, G, and B. Yes, that's good. Uh, that means, uh, yes, R, G, B are the channels, but they're not the only channels. What I actually mean by my question is, what does channels mean? What is the meaning of the word channels? And they get confused at that time and they start giving all kinds of examples and that's when I usually ask take radio channels or television channels for example and that's where they're completely blocked. So what exactly is channels? Well channels comes in from the default word the water channels or water gutters which we have. What it basically means that you have a path and something flows inside it. In a computer, what flows in a path is information, right? We have info which is flowing in paths. So basically, we have this path in which red information is flowing, this one where green is flowing, and this one where blue is flowing. So this is the red channel, this is the green channel, and this is the blue channel. Simple as that. Channels are the paths in which information flows, right? So what we just now established is we have pixels. Each pixel has some color information fed in using the primary colors R, G, and B. And because there are so many, um, so much information of red, green, and blue submitted to the same pixel, each one forms its own channel or path for information. And they are all combined to create the final image. Okay, so let's get ahead from here. By default, when we are working with images or anything else, R G and B channels are what we usually see. All right, these are the visible channels. But these days, uh, most of you have worked with image formats like PNG or Targa TIFFs or anything. But PNG is quite uh, popular, and you know that it has a separate channel, and it's called the alpha channel. Uh, so alpha channel actually gives you the opacity of the image or it can actually stand for anything but by default we use it for transparency mapping so alpha channel can give you the opacity of any image wherever we have a hundred percent alpha it basically means the image is opaque and where we have zero percent alpha it means the image is transparent so we have RGB information and we are giving in some transparency information right now. Sorry, transparency information. So now we know that, okay, we can fill in whatever amount of information we want into an image. But the problem is what kind of information? We can't actually see it. So is there any point in loading it in? This is where image formats and everything came in. So if I start with the basics here, uh, we have image formats like JPEG. Uh, we have uh, so many other things, but I'll stick with this. Uh, this is a um, very popular format, you know, and it's been online for a very long time. So pretty much everyone has used a JPEG image these days. So a JPEG image can only store R, G, and B channels, and it has pretty much no alpha channel. Uh, there is a newer version of JPEG called J2000 or JPEG2000, which has alpha channel and stereoscopy and all, but I don't want to get into that. So JPEG is there and it can store RGB. But whereas PNG can also store alpha channel. Uh, there are other formats, like for example TIFF, which not only can store RGB and alpha, but it can also store mul multiple levels of them. It can actually take one image, which has RGBA information, and put another image on top of it, which also has RGBA information on it, and another image on top of it, again, which has RGBA, and so on. Basically, you can add one on top of another, on top of another, and create layers. So basically imagine you're working in Photoshop and you have different layers. You don't have to save it as a PSD file. You can save it as a TIFF and it'll still maintain your layers. So there are many different formats and each one maintains channels. That is where all the information resides. So what is the benefit of all of this? Now by default our eyes are perceptible to visible light and on a computer we use RGB to display it. 
But for a computer, it can't recognize what's there in the image. Let's say I have a photograph, and I have a person here who's standing. Yes, that's an awesome portrait. So, I have this photograph where there is this person, and I want to do some color corrections, or I want to do some brightness, contrast, blurring, whatever. I want to do something with the image. So, I don't want to apply the filter on the entire image as a whole, but I let's say I just want the... Uh, filter to be applied only on this person, right? So what I want to do is I want to isolate only the pixels which belong to this person and the computer cannot do it on its own. I have to feed it some information. So what I'll do is I'll create what I call a mat. So a mat is basically an alpha channel or any kind of a black and white image which uh, basically uh, gives you um, uh, well it's easier to select parts of a pixel using it uh, the way computers work I get into it more when we talk about masks in nuke but uh, what this image would look like is we'll have the same guy and okay just imagine it's the same outline as that and I want to edit only him so what would happen is the entire background on which the guy standing would be black and only the guy would be white right so now if I want to apply a filter on this image so I'm applying a filter uh, let's say I want to blur and I'll be using this image as a mask on that blur so what the computer is going to think is okay there is some white information here so basically what the user is telling me is I want to blur only this part which is white whatever is black leave it alone so basically once the image comes out the entire guy is blurred whereas the background is sharp but instead let's say I wanted it reversed I wanted the background blurred and I wanted the guy to be sharp so in that case I would have to invert the image so basically there is black and white now I shifted the color so that what was once black is now white and what was once white is now black so basically by shifting it I was able to change the operation so what is happening in this entire scenario here well first of all whenever we are working on a computer most of the calculations are happening using channels the most default channels we can see are the RGB but we can't always work with RGB we need some transparency we want some matte and that is given by the A channel or the alpha channel but this is not always going to help there are loads of other things which you want to create like the matte I just created for that person so this is not the only channels I want to work with I want some extra channels so this is where I am going to create a new channel set by default all softwares are programmed to analyze this first channel set which is the RGBA but now let's say the guy in the photograph his name is uh, uh, let's say Mike and this guy is uh, uh, supposed to be matted out in my program or whatever so I'm going to create a Mike channel set so individually R, G, B and A are what we call channels but right now I've just created a channel set so a channel set is an actual um, a set of channels basically so this mic can have additional channels inside it so let's say I wanted Mike's hand to be separate I wanted his body to be separate and I wanted his head to be separate so in such a case what I would do is I'll take the same picture which I had of Mike and uh, let's say I wanted his hands to be separate so this might be his hands it might be in a separate channel this is only the hand channel I'll have another image where I only have his body and this is a separate one and I have another image where I have only his head right so when I combine all of these together I have a mic channel set but individually this is the mic hand channel this is the body and is the head so I just created a new channel set which can have mic and any one of the subsets so this is what it means you are creating some extra channels which have extra information it can be anything anything at all I'll just give you a couple of examples in a minute but just remember channel sets 
hold loads of channels inside them and the channels can give you any information you want right so let's see a couple of information channels that are very useful so majority of the times the channels are used by people who are doing VFX or past compositing or anyone who works with open EXR files or uh, anyone who's interested basically so uh, first thing I want you to understand most of the 3d packages uh, when you render out uh, or the output which you get from them are taken out not in but a single file but in several files but it's very hard to maintain them in several files like let's say I wanted Mike's hand I wanted his body I wanted his head separate if I had a single image to depict uh, depict each one of those different channels then I would have loads of images I can't actually maintain them so instead what I want to do is I want to have a single image which can store all these channels I don't want to go about searching which channel I want from different images but I want everything in a single channel sorry single image but I want to load whatever channel I want for that reason uh, we have an amazing format uh, which uh, ILM came up with and they open sourced it it's called the OpenEXR So OpenEXR is a format which can store loads of channels, 100 plus. The OpenEXR can store 100 plus channels easily. So what I would do is, uh, whatever hands are there, whatever legs are there, they go into separate channel sets, their own channels and everything, right? So if uh, something instead is coming from a 3D program, uh, if you're already familiar, these you know, words might sound very familiar to you already. So uh, you might have something like the diffuse channel. Uh, you might have something like the specular. Uh, you might have something like, uh, let's say, shadows. And so on. So you have these different channels and you want to work with them, but you don't want to load in these loads of images. So what you would instead do is, you'll take a single file in which you are going to see the RGB information by default, but this RGB information has other information behind it which is not visible that will be the diffuse uh, the diffuse channel by the way will have color so diffuse will have RGB inside it uh, by the way this is the usual new convention where you have the channel set followed by a dot and then the channels inside it uh, and all the channels which you're looking at right now are mentioned after that so you have the diffuse channel you have the specular by default if you have just white lights you might have you can g get away with just a single channel but it's better to have multiple channels on it just in case apart from that we have shadows and if you have a single light usually shadows you'll only get an alpha channel because shadows usually have a single color throughout so depending on things you can see here the RGB information is what the actual image looks like. This is the image with uh, Windows or Photoshop or After Effects. When you open the image, this is what you're seeing. But the, but the image has actually all this information inside it, right? So in Nuke, you can target any of this information. You can pick up the diffuse, you can pick out the specular, you can pick out the shadows anytime you want. All of that is stored in within each and every single pixel which is there in the image right so basically what we have done right now is whenever you have an image image is made of pixels and each one of these pixels stores RGB information and each one R, G, R, B are called channels and so the default image which we usually see is called the image um, the basic uh, default image RGB channels we don't actually have a name for it or at least I don't think we do so we have this RGB channel on it and now when we go deep inside it if you want to store more channels I can create channel sets and this channel set can have any number of RGB channels or whatnot so let's see an ex a couple of examples I just talked about diffuse and speculars and such so let's uh, see what else could be there uh, there is something which is very important when you're doing some 3d compositing and that is known as a depth channel so we have something called the Z depth so this is actually uh, signifying how far away an object is when you compare it to the camera so in the previous image if I consider the same guy standing here if I take a Z depth image of the same thing because this guy is standing in the front he would be white 
whereas the background is in the back, so it would be black. Let's say instead that there is some kind of a covering, there is something covering the screen over here which is before him or it's uh, actually covering him or it's closer to the camera than the guy is. So this part would be whiter, he'll be a little bit grayish and this place will be the darkest, this will be completely black. So in such a case, this channel is basically giving me the depth information and nothing else. It doesn't give me color, it doesn't give me anything else. So in that case, I don't need all the additional channels for this. I can just tell uh, this is my depth, depth channel set and with an alpha channel inside it, right? So apart from that, what, are, what other kinds of channels can you store? You can, change, uh, you can store depth channel. Apart from that, you can store what is called a motion channel. A motion channel is what happens when an object is moving in the scene. So by default in maths or in basically any 3D program, you have this convention where x-axis is usually represented by red and y-axis is represented by green. So it follows a convention that R, G, B equals X, Y and Z. So whenever an object is traveling in the X direction it's usually given the red color and when it's moving in the Y direction you get the uh, green color. So if it's moving between the two, uh, two axes it'll get the yellow color. Uh, don't ask me about the negative space because that's a huge problem right now. I don't want to get into it. So if an object is there in the scene and it's moving anywhere I can easily uh, use this convention by just giving a color to the object and I'll know exactly which direction it's moving in which is very useful in giving motion blur, blur and such. So, uh, we saw the depth, we saw motion and apart from that we know how to create mats. These are the most basic things we'll work with throughout in Nuke but I'll show you along the way that you can create pretty much anything. The only other thing I would like to talk about is what is called Roto. Roto is a short form of calling uh, of the term rotoscopy or uh, rotoscope. So uh, the actual term rotoscope stands for merging two or three things together uh, in the film. So basically let's say you have a cartoon character which is merged into a live action film. That's basically rotoscopy. But when you're doing roto uh, these days it basically means you're creating the mat. If you have a character you want to work with, you want to blur him, you want to do something. I was talking about having a black and white image where the character was white and the background was black so that you can only edit him. And that is what Roto stands for. So you take an entire sequence of images. Uh, if you work with fem, uh, Photoshop, you must be familiar with the pen tool or the lasso tool. So you're going around each and every frame, trying to make sure you grab as much of the character as possible. So you get a perfect outline of him as close as possible so that you can go edit him specifically, right? You can cut him out, put him in somewhere else, or you can work on him specifically in that image. So basically, Roto is the job which you do when you're trying to get this and that is one that is one of the easiest ways of creating an alpha channel or creating a uh, basically a mat and you can pretty much create any channel you want if you can just roto or start uh, masking stuff out or you can even create uh, images you whatever images you want using photoshop right okay so for the final note on this video i kind of went over the mark which I had, I'll probably split this video or not. So now, the main things we understood, any image we take stores information using channels and what we want to do is manipulate these channels. So the most default channels we can see are the RGB, A which is all, always there and then oh, when we are working with additional channels what we do is we create a channel set and once we have created the channel set we can nest in whatever channels we want it could be RGBA, it could be ABCD it could be anything you want, you don't have to worry about the naming convention there just make sure you remember the names right? so uh, by default uh, like uh, image format like OpenEXR I haven't actually pushed the limit of it till now but I guess it can store somewhere around 120 uh, plus channels, the open EXR format. Uh, as far as I know, the original EXR can store uh, lots more than that. 
Now, when we are working with Nuke, it is very, very good at handling these channels. Uh, if uh, you go through the previous video on the view user interface, the viewer, you can see there is a specific tab just to work with channels. So, whenever you are merging images together, like you take two images together and put them and create a final composite, you are just merging channels together or whether if you're doing some color corrections you're actually changing channels you're manipulating channels all the time so that is the reason it's very important to understand this so anyway I don't want to bore you anymore it's already 25 minutes so I hope you understood whatever I was talking about uh, channels are very important to understand they're the path in which information flows and that is what the computer manipulates if you have any doubts or a I guess uh, this video was quite confusing and fast. Uh, whatever your suggestions, let me know. If you want, I'll also recreate this video in a better format or probably put in more data into it if you think I just gave too less. Or... So, let's see. Give me your feedback and I'll see you next. So, I hope it was useful and goodbye.